Before we begin understanding what are the big data sets in biology and how to analyze them or how to interpret them, it's important to understand the basics. So in the next few classes, we will try to cover some of the fundamentals of molecular biology as a basic introduction to bring to speed and on the same plane everybody who's taking this course, whether whatever the background they might be coming from. Or it might be just a refresher course for those who already know this. So as we all know, a cell, be it a bacterial cell or a viral cell like COVID or human cell or any other animal cell, it is made up of very specific, unique universal features. One of the first ones that is common across all the living organisms is DNA. You must have heard the name DNA. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. It's a long chain, long polymer made up of four different kinds of monomers named adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thiamine. So A, G, C, and T. These four letters make up all the DNA molecule, whether it is found in a bacteria or a human. That is why it is called a universal feature, and it's a universal feature of all life forms on Earth. If you see this figure, it basically DNA is a polymer of a sequence of these four letters. So if you read this, this is a G, this is a T, this is an A, followed by another A, then a C, and so on and so forth. And DNA normally exists as a double strand, which means there's a strand which is on the top here, there's a strand which is on the bottom here. And one of the unique properties of DNA is that a adenine will always pair with thymine and guanine will always pair with cytosine. So if you know the sequence of strand W, you will be able to determine the strand which is the bottom strand. So this is called a W strand, this is called a Crick strand from the two scientists who discovered the structure of DNA, Watson strand and Crick strand. So if you know the sequence of Watson strand, you can figure out the sequence of this Crick strand and vice versa. If you know C, a Crick strand, you'll be able to figure out the Watson strand. And one of the other unique features is that it sort of is a helix, which means it's a twisted ladder shape. And this is what how DNA is represented. And you can see G is always going with the C, T is always going with the A, A is always going with the T, C is always going with the G. And that is that's also uh, uniform across all the cells. So just to dive a little bit deeper into the structure of these molecules, DNA. So if you see here on the left, you have the what is called the sugar phosphate backbone. So essentially there is a sugar molecule which is a 5 carbon compound. There is a phosphate molecule which is connecting the two sugar molecules. So if there is a sugar molecule alternating with a phosphate molecule, a sh phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar like that. One end of the sugar has a 5 prime carbon so carbon which is therefore called a 5 prime end. The other one is a has a 3 prime hydroxyl group so this is called a 3 prime end. So all DNA strands would have one 5 prime strand end and one 3 prime end. And if you look deeper into one of these structures this is a phosphate group and this is a 5 carbon pento sugar where the it's a ring shaped sugar molecule on the first carbon is attached one of these nucleotides which will which were these four letters a t c g on the uh, carbon 4 we have or carbon 5 we have the phosphate group attached so if there is a at the end of the day you will have a phosphate group attached to the carbon fifth carbon which is the 5 prime end and on the 3 prime end you will have the hydroxyl group attached which will be the uh, 
three prime end. So, as I said, there are four letters A, C, T, G. So, cytosine, which is a C, and thiamine, which is a T, are called pyrimidines. These are six ring carbon ring structures, uh, five carbon rings with the with the nitrogen. And purines are two ring structures which are adenine and guanine. So, A adenine always goes, purine always goes with thiamine, guanine always goes with cytosine. And then I said, the, here you can see there are two different kinds of carbon, uh, sorry, um, sugar molecules. One is a deoxyribose where the oxygen at the second carbon is missing and then there is a ribose sugar where OH or the oxygen atom is present and this is called ribose sugar. This is a kind of sugar which is found in RNA, this is a kind of sugar which is found in DNA. We will come back to the structure of RNA a little bit later, but this is one of the differences between DNA and RNA and we will come to what is to understand what is the purpose of RNA as well. Another, another thing that is which is unique and different between DNA and RNA is that DNA always has a thymine, so T is always in a DNA and uracil is always in RNA. Rest of the letters, so A, G and C are common between DNA and RNA, but T is in DNA only and U is in RNA only. Okay. So, essentially you have these monomers making up the structure. So, as you can see this is a purine, this is a pyrimidine, 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 right? That is how it is and opposing feature, opposing pairing we already understood which is A goes with T, C goes with G. So, one of the principles of uh, molecular biology which is sort of a central tenet in molecular biology is called central dogma of molecular biology. It is it's a, it's a representation of how the information flows in a cell. So, all the information that is in a cell is stored in the molecule DNA. That is where all the functions that are done by a cell are encoded all the specific things that a cell does, all the specific phenotypes that a cell shows are encoded there and that is common across all the cells of a large animal such as a human which has different kinds of cells even though the DNA remains identical across all the cells. So, DNA has a property to replicate itself. So, DNA synthesis is a process of replication and this unique property of replicating itself makes DNA the best method of transmitting information from one cell to another. So, when a cell divides, DNA replicates and it is copied ready for it to be transmitted to the next generation, next cell, next daughter cell. So, if a cell let us say divides into two cells, the DNA gets replicated and both these cells have identical DNA and this one, this unique property makes DNA the hereditary material to be transmitted from one generation to another generation as well. So, the DNA which we have is a mixture of DNA from our parents. But when a DNA in our skin cell divides or in our bone marrow cell divides, it is dividing to make sure that a bone marrow cell always makes a bone marrow cell or a skin cell always makes a skin cell. Even though the DNA is same, but that is how it is. We will go into slightly more details of how a skin and a bone marrow cells are doing different function in a little bit. So, Hereditary information is stored in DNA. There are few exceptions, but for the 
huge majority, a large majority of living organisms on earth, hereditary information is stored as DNA. And the functional unit in a DNA is called a gene, which is encoded as a gene. New genes, so everybody comes with a set of genes. Each species has a given set of genes. New genes are usually created from pre-existing genes. So there is no de novo addition of a gene. There is a de novo functionalization of a gene, but not de novo synthesis of a gene. So when genes in this DNA are copied, same genes exist here as well. Okay. So this is called the central dogma of biology. It starts with DNA replication. Then once the DNA is replicated, a cell has to function and that function starts with the first step called RNA synthesis, which is also called transcription, which makes this unique molecule called RNA, which is ribonucleic acid. So this is deoxyribonucleic acid, this is ribonucleic acid and that RNA is translated to make proteins which are the functional units of cell. So all the instructions that are required to make a functional unit like protein are encoded in the DNA. So DNA is the source, DNA is the source of all proteins that a cell makes. Okay. So this flow of information, this information flow is called central dogma and we will quickly cover some of the basic steps in each of this process.